The Secret of the Rosary, Part 13 23rd Rose, A Memorial Jesus Christ, the divine spouse of our souls and our very dear friend, wishes us to remember his goodness to us and all his gifts and wants us to prize them above all else. Whenever we meditate devoutly and lovingly upon the sacred mysteries of the rosary, our Lord has an accidental joy, and so has Our Lady and all the saints in heaven. These mysteries are the most signal results of our Lord's love for us and the greatest presence that he could possibly give to us, because it, because it is by virtue of such presence that the Blessed Virgin herself and all the saints are in their glory in heaven. One day, Blessed Angela of Foligno begged our Lord to let her know by which religious exercise she, she could honor him best. He appeared to her nailed to his cross and said, My daughter, look at my wounds. She then realized that nothing pleases our dear Lord more than meditation upon his sufferings. Then he showed her the wounds on his head and revealed still other sufferings to her and said, I have suffered all this for your salvation. What can you ever do to return my love for you? The holy sacrifice of the Mass gives boundless honor to the Most Blessed Trinity because it represents the passion of Jesus Christ and because through the Mass we offer God the merits of our Lord's obedience of his sufferings and of his precious blood. The whole of the heavenly court also receives an accidental joy from the Mass. Several doctors of the Church, together with St. Thomas Aquinas, tells us that, for the same reason, all the blessed in heaven rejoice in the communion of the faithful, because the blessed sacrament is a memorial of the passion and death of Jesus Christ and that by means of it, men share in its fruits and work out their salvation. Now the Holy Rosary, recited together with meditation on the sacred mysteries, is a sacrifice of praise to God, to thank Him for the great grace of our redemption. It is also a holy reminder of the sufferings, death, and glory of Jesus Christ. It is therefore true that the rosary gives glory, gives an accidental joy to our Lord, to our Lady, and to all the blessed, because they cannot desire anything greater or more contributive to our eternal happiness than to see us engaged in a practice which is so glorious for our Lord and so salutary for ourselves. The Gospel teaches us that a sinner who is converted and who does penance gives joy to all the angels. If the repentance and conversion of one sinner is enough to make the angels rejoice, how great must be the happiness and jubilation of the whole heavenly court, and what glory for our blessed Lord himself to see us here on earth meditating devoutly and lovingly on his humiliations and torments, and on his cruel and ignominious death. Could anything possibly touch our hearts more surely than this and be more calculated to inspire us to true and sincere repentance? A Christian who does not meditate on the mysteries of the rosary is very ungrateful to our Lord and shows how little he cares for all that our divine Savior has suffered to save the world. This attitude seems to show that he knows little or nothing of the life of Jesus Christ and that he has never taken the trouble to find out about him, what he did and what he went through in order to save us. A Christian of this kind ought to fear that having never known Jesus Christ or having put him out of his mind and heart, he will disown him at the day of judgment and will say reproachfully, Amen, amen, I say to you, I know you not. 
Let us then meditate on the life and sufferings of our Lord by means of the Holy Rosary. Let us learn to know him well and to be grateful for all his blessings, so that at the day of judgment he may number us among his children and his friends. 24th Rose Means of Perfection The saints always made our Lord's life the principal object of their study. They meditated on his virtues and sufferings, and in this way they arrived at Christian perfection. When one St. Bernard began this meditation, he always continued it. At the very beginning of my conversion, he said, I made a bouquet of myrrh, made up of the sorrows of my Savior. I placed this bouquet upon my heart, thinking of the stripes, the thorns, and the nails of his passion. I used all my mental strength to meditate on these mysteries every day. This was the practice of the holy martyrs too. We know how admirably they triumphed over the most cruel sufferings. St. Bernard says that the martyr's wonderful constancy could have only sprung from one source, their constant meditation on the wounds of Jesus Christ. The martyrs were Christ's athletes, his champions. While their blood gushed forth and their bodies were racked with cruel torments, their generous souls were hidden in the wounds of our Lord. These wounds made them invincible. During her whole life, the Blessed Mother's chief concern was meditation on the virtues and sufferings of her son. When she heard the angels sing their hymns of joy at his birth, and when she saw the shepherds adore him in the stable, her heart and mind were filled with wonder, and she meditated upon all these marvels. She compared the greatness of the Word incarnate to his deep humility, and the way he lowered himself she thought of him in his manger, filled with straw, and then on his throne in heaven and in the bosom of his eternal Father. She compared the might of God to the weakness of a baby, and his wisdom to his simplicity. One day Our Lady said to St. Bridget, Whenever I meditate on the beauty, modesty, and wisdom of my Son, my heart was filled with joy. Whenever I thought of his hands and feet, which would be pierced with cruel nails, I wept bitterly, and my heart was rent with sorrow and pain. After our Lord's ascension, our Blessed Lady spent the rest of her life in visiting the places that had been hallowed by his presence and suffering. When she was in those places, she used to meditate upon his boundless love and upon his terrible passion. St. Mary Magdalene, did nothing other than religious exercises of this kind during the last 30 years of her life when she lived in the prayerful seclusion of St. Baum. St. Jerome says that devotion to the holy places was widespread among the faithful in the early centuries of the church. They came to the Holy Land from all corners of Christendom so as to impress a great love and remembrance of their Savior more deeply upon their hearts by seeing the places and things he had made holy by his birth, by his work, by his sufferings, and by his death. All Christians have but one faith and adore one and the same God, all hoping for the same happiness in heaven. They have one mediator, who is Jesus Christ, and therefore they must all imitate their divine model, and in order to do this, they must meditate on the mysteries of his life, his virtues, and of his glory. It is a great mistake to think that only priests and religious and those who have withdrawn from the turmoil of the world are supposed to meditate upon the truths of our faith and the mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ. If priests and religious have an obligation to meditate on the great truths of our holy religion, in order to live up to their vocation worthily, the same obligation then is just as much incumbent upon the laity because of the fact that every day they meet with spiritual dangers which might make them lose their souls. Therefore, 
they should arm themselves with a frequent meditation on the life, virtues, and sufferings of our blessed Lord, which are so beautifully contained in the 15 mysteries of the Holy Rosary.